What is your personal favorite ARM-based device? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, of course, uh, probably many of us carry in our pocket, so the, my cell phone will be the, the most favorite device. Describe the future of computing in one word. More data. Uh, I mean, data has changed lives for people. I think uh, it continues to evolve. The, the amount of data we generate nowadays, even at a consumer level, it has grown exponentially, so I think data is what's going to matter in the future. On a scale of 1 to 10, how excited are you about the future of computing? It's, uh, I think this is a big inflection point in the industry, so everybody should be excited about the future of computing. What do you see as the breakthrough technology in the next decade? I think looking at the inflection point, what we are seeing in industry, generative AI, is probably the next big inflection point. I think it's a big transformation moment, similar to what I would say mobile phones did 20 years ago. So I think generative AI is the big one. What will have the biggest impact on technology over the next decade? AI, the metaverse, or ambient computing? I think AI is probably gonna be the most dominant one. Augmented reality, virtual reality, or mixed reality, which has the biggest potential? Oh, that's an interesting one. Um, <laughs> I think uh, augmented reality is probably the uh, interesting one where you know you overlay stuff. I think uh, going completely into personally feeling about the metaverse world where everything is virtual uh, will be a doomsday for me. <laughs> so I, I do believe uh, the augmented reality is probably the one. If you could choose between more performance or more performance per watt, which one would you choose? Uh, definitely more performance for what, uh, because that has a aspect of power efficiency built in there, uh, which ultimately is going to be the key thing as you build more systems. I think uh, power efficiencies have to be kept in mind. On a scale of 1 to 10, how big of a challenge is security across connected devices? I think it's 10 on 10, um, because like uh, the data which you're generating if it is not secured, I think the end users uh, will always be scared. I mean, we have already seen security data thefts have increased over the last few years as more data is getting generated. So security is, is paramount, whether you are doing it on the edge, whether you're doing it in the cloud. Uh, it is the now, the, as I call it, is the essential part of any modern day compute architecture. Is Moore's law really coming to an end? Um, <laughs> As an engineer, I think we always find solutions. Uh, uh, it used to be a saying a few years ago. I think Moore's Law, I feel, has been extended. Uh, we personally are big fans of triplets, so I do feel there are ways you can extend the life on the Moore's Law. It's just that engineers need to keep innovating on various fronts to extend the life of Moore's Law. It seems everybody is pursuing more performance despite the murmurs of Moore's Law ending. What do you think will drive the most performance rise when manufacturing chips? Would it be novel materials, 3D-enabled designs, or the simplification of processor instructions, or advanced packaging? I think it'll be uh, first and foremost uh, advanced packaging, and 3D enablement probably is the next. Uh, I think for many years, packaging was lagging. I think in the last few years, uh, packaging engineers have really stepped up to the game. So uh, I believe the packaging, advanced packaging is the way to go for future and leveraging the chiplets uh, as a way to build heterogeneous architectures going forward. What will experience the biggest evolution over the next decade for you, software or hardware? I think it's both now. Uh, I think there has been phases what we saw initially a uh, lot of innovations happened at the hardware. I think then came a real software era of what we call as in the apps. But given today, what we see as the differentiation hardware brings in, I think software is built on top of it to leverage that differentiation. So I think it'll be both. What will be the best place for future processing needs, the edge or the cloud? I think ultimately it has to reside on edge. Uh, to begin with, yes, a lot of work is going to be done on training the models in the cloud, but eventually to harness the real power uh, for the computing, a lot of things have to be done at the edge. Where do you see most of AI taking place, the edge or the cloud? Today, I would say it's still happening a lot in the cloud. It's changing gradually as the devices are gonna get more intelligent, so it will move to the edge. And that's the thing which everybody is building around as how you can move off this AI to the edge. There seems to be a rise in OEMs designing their own SOCs. 
what do you see as the main driver? Is it differentiation of features, design flexibility, or supply longevity? I think it's differentiation is primarily the reason uh, why OEMs do, are, as we call it, is getting vertically integrated. Um, but there are other aspects, some do care about supply longevity. I mean, electric car makers are a perfect example, building their own chips. But differentiation is the main thing where, you know, by building a differentiated chip, rather than using a general purpose version from the semis, uh, they can bring a different product to the market. What will be the single biggest challenge in computing over the next decade? I think it's going to be the management of data. Uh, which comes in various aspects, whether it's from the security aspect, where you are storing the data, are you using it correctly, and, you know, the what they call as the policing of the data. So the management of the data will be the big aspect around it. When you think about the next 10 years, what one computing trend will fuel your company's growth the most? I think uh, AI uh, will be the biggest trend uh, on which our company will be riding on. What's your favorite thing about ARM technology? Uh, I think uh, one thing which I've always seen with ARM technology is, uh, you know, the robustness uh, which ARM um, provides in their technology solutions. Once they have a solution, it's uh, robust. So, so that's probably the key thing. How important is ARM technology for your future roadmap? Uh, it is one of the key components, like we are heavily focused in the infra uh, structure segment, uh, AI, HPC, networking, storage, market. So whatever ARM um, is innovating on the neoverse side of uh, product line, I think uh, that's going to play a key role uh, for, for the next compute architectures. Roughly how many products do you have that are ARM-based? Um, I would say at least 20 to 30 products so far. And what is your favorite ARM-based product or technology from your company? Uh, yes, there are a few products out there which have been launched uh, in like some satellite-based systems. Um, so yes, there are a few products out there leveraging ARM technology. Do you have a favorite memory working with ARM that you could share with us? Yeah, um, actually it's a little dated answer I'm going to give. It's uh, something we built with ARM in, back in uh, 2014. In fact, we built one of the first industries chiplet with ARM. Uh, back then in 2014, nobody talked about chiplets. So we built uh, ARM Codex A9 based chiplet in 28 nanometer, uh, which we demoed at uh, ARM, uh, a ARM conference. And I think ARM gave us an award for it. So I think that's one of the uh, moments I remember. 